Hi everyone, and welcome to something brand new! Because we finally finished our, Bo our Pokemon Black Toon Nuzlocke. And I guess to fill in the Saturday slot, <laughs> we are doing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Uh, this is the normal one. Cameron was nice enough to buy me the trilogy, so I technically have three games at my disposal right now. But I've already... I watched a good YouTuber named Lucagen play pretty much most of the Phoenix Wright games, unfortunately, so I know all the answers and it wouldn't be really authentic. But Cameron over here has never seen any Phoenix Wright content at all. None of the anime, none of the games, no memes about it. Nothing. So he is the perfect candidate to play this, Well, I probably just like just a little bit of hand holding of if he needs help with anything. I'm not going to need any excited? help. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna solve all these. They're gonna put me on on Law and Order after this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead and press New Game. So there there's th that's the first one. That's the second game, and that's the third one. So we gotta start with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. All right, the first episode, the first tribulate, the first turnabout. Are you ready for this? There's a lot of reading ahead of you. Oh lord. Yeah, it's a lot. Oh, I got an achievement. Let's go. <laughs> <sighs> she did. <laughs> Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. It has vibrations. It does. I, I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. Make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. She's hot, isn't she? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, hiya, Chief. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Thank you, I got my attorney's badge and everything. <laughs> Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes, sadly. Actually, I kind of owe my, my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out in any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. That's you. Uh, is this a girl or a guy? This is a guy. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death! Despair! <laughs> oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Is this him? This is Larry Butts! I told Cameron about this. I'm like, you're gonna love this guy. He's funny as shit. <laughs> Nick! Hey! Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. <laughs> Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. <laughs> what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I, I just can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? Newspapers say it was you. And I believe them. Guilty. <laughs> my name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Dead girl, she spelled ketchup everywhere. <laughs> a young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. <laughs> my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> in 23 years I've known him, it's always been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I could say, though, 
It's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I own one. Which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do! <laughs> Man, I can really read this better than I can in the Wattpad book club readings <laughs> and everything else. Oh shit, we're in court now. Isn't Phoenix Wright, like, too close with this case to be, like, a so proper lawyer? Yeah, it's fine though, don't worry about it. Oh, alright. You want to voice the judge? You can do your old man one that you did in Black 2. Uh, no, I, I, I've i seen a little bit of how this judge acts. I don't think that that voice will work. <laughs> alright, alright. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a do, like, a stern voice, like... Okay. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. I'm guilty, Your Honor! Oh, the prosecution is ready, your honor. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> my, your honor, my client pleads oopsie daisies to the. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my client was triple dog dare to do it. <laughs> well, well, if it's a triple dog dare, well, I guess we just case dismissed. <laughs> the uh, defense is ready, your honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Dot, dot, dot. Mr. Wright, given the, cir given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to assert your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Cool. <laughs> Hands shaking, eyesight fading, arms weak, mom's spaghetti! <laughs> the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, me if <laughs> I'm on trial, your honor! <laughs> there you go. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew! I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait... Uh-oh... No! No, wait! I forgot! I'm trying to blank over here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Don't look at me like that, girl. I'm trying! Oh, the, the victim, of course. I know the victim's name. It's... I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the tab. Okay, well, we don't have that. Just press RB. Thank you. What? Alright. Cindy's autopsy report. Yeah. Oh, we got a... We, we, the badge. We got a badge. No one can believe that I'm a defense attorney if I don't carry this around. <laughs> uh, Alright. All right, time, time of, of death, death. 7.31, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Yeah, that's why I'm banged her on top of the head. With a blunt. With a bl yeah, a bl <laughs> Someone was smoking weed. Oh, this has everyone's profile, so you can you can see everything about them. All right. All right, and then that's the defendant. Cindy Stone, age 22. Yeah, a victim yeah. of this case. A model. She lived in an apartment by herself. <laughs> <laughs> Generally bad at getting his points across. Yeah. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Uh, Mia Fey. <laughs> Cinder Block. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for you to see the names of these people, because all of them are puns. You'll see in a second. Um, the, the, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Shake my head. <laughs> Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Yeah, poisoned. She was poisoned by an apple, you're... <laughs> she was struck once by a blunt object. The blunt was so strong. Correct. <laughs> You've answered all of my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Ray. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well, then... First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne, ugly ass. Yes, your honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? No, your honor. <laughs> the murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. No 
skull is found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Alright, a, st a statue of the shape of the thinker. It was rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added to the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the- uh... <laughs> Use RB to check the court frequently. Okay. He's thinking. Do we have any more profiles? No. We, we don't have a profile about the judge? No, he's not important, I guess. It just says his name is like Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh no, there he gets excited easily. This can be bad. He gets up there, he's like, I did it! I murdered her in court! <laughs> Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it true that the, the, the victim had recently dumped you? <laughs> hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, did they all die? <laughs> I don't know that last one with Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, though. I might need to look that up after this. He, he was like a... Fun history fact for everyone, he was like a, a, Ro a, a Roman senator, I believe. He was like some someone in like high in the Roman government uh, that fled Rome and went down to see Cleopatra. He ended up like leaving Cleopatra and then dying. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did Cleopatra kill herself or some shit? Uh, I don't actually know what happened to Cleopatra. Yeah, me either. Someone tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Someone give us a history. But I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know the Egypt lore. I just know the <laughs> Roman side of the lore. Lore. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. <laughs> What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you were describing is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing another man. She had just recently come from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies. All of it lies. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day she was murdered. You know who else was in Paris? Who? Who's Find it? out next time. <laughs> What do you mean next time? We're only like 13 minutes. <laughs> I was making a, a reference to... Wait, is it, is it not added to that? Okay, now it is. Okay, the victim was apparently arrived home from Paris at 7.30 the day before the murder. Okay. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Let me check this out. So, 7, 7.30, day before the murder. 7.31, she just killed the next day. Five. Okay, it doesn't have a time that she came back. Yeah. Dude, no way! Your victim was a model. Oh shit, the victim, not your victim! <laughs> I mean, it could be! <laughs> but didn't have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men that gave her money and gifts in exchange for sex. <laughs> she, <t> she <laughs> took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. That's so fucked up, man. Let her live her life. Well, she can't, but let's... <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? I think she's dead. Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... You want? What do you want to do? Do you want to stop him from answering or see what happens? OBJECTION! OBJECTION! IRRELEVANT! OBJECTION! LACK OF HAIR line. <laughs> OBJECTION! LACK OF BITCHES! <laughs> OBJECTION! LACK OF FATHER FIGURE! <laughs> My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men! That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof! Mince. <laughs> Dude, Nick! What do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. 
Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I don't. <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Nope. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> oh, well, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Uh-oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Hmm. What do you want to do? You know what? I'm gonna have him answer honestly. Yeah, I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. <laughs> er, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. <laughs> Order? Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Aw, oh, you should have heard his objection. He just, like, <laughs> Your Honor, the defendant is lying. <laughs> lying? Robo, Robo, Grinch. The prosecution, the prosecution has like would like to call a witness that will prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fling the scene of the crime! Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Frank Sawit? Yeah, they all- most of these people have puns in their names. Mr. Sawant, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that right? Oh, yes, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawant, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Alright. Witness account! Is that spelled right? Would you say witnesses, or- Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you would put an S at the end of it. I think it's fine. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he was in a hurry because he left the door halfway open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I, Quail. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. She was... Hang on a second. Four to five. This is bullshit! <laughs> Alright. The man that was running, without a doubt, the defendant sitting over right there. I can see the murder in his eyes! <laughs> hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones <laughs> supposed to work during a blackout? <laughs> He's like, I don't know how this shit works. <laughs> I'm fucking all that shit. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones don't function normally. The phone that Mr. Solid used was one of the- Oh, it was a landline, so no, that shit wasn't gonna work. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout f f for your- Perusal. Perusal, thank you, ominous voice. Electricity of Miss Stone's ability went out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Okay, so it was- it was out during that time. Yeah. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, um, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. <laughs> all, all right, right. <laughs> this is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Did you not pay attention to law school, right? 
Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a, a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the, rec the court record with the witness's testimony. Then, once you find the contradiction, contradict the evidence, present it, and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. We just, like, take the paper and just go, <laughs> just rub it in. Open the court with RB and then point out the contradictions in the testimony. They'll, they'll have a whole thing for it. This of one. Like, okay. It, 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 it. Okay, this one. Yeah. This one's fine. Okay. There'll, there'll be a whole section where you can like present evidence. Okay. Cross examination. And also, you can press them on statements. So if you're curious about anything, they'll tell you more information. So LB to press, and then RB to like present, and you open the settings. <laughs> so you, you scroll through, and if you have like a question about it, you can press them on the statement and get more information about it. Okay. Yeah. And then if you present the wrong evidence to the wrong evidence to like the wrong thing, you'll get a penalty. Are you sure she was dead? <laughs> well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that blood looked fatal to someone. Very well. What happened next? I quailed in fright. <laughs> Unable to go inside. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't, right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh that? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf at the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using it to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Near a park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. Alright, and then you just select the evidence you want. Oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> Erection, you're on! <laughs> <laughs> you found the bu the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for sure. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your, te your statement dr directly contradicts the autopsy report. Does he keep smacking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your Honor, th I'm spitting facts over here. <laughs> The autopsy notes of the time of death were somewhere after 4 p.m. There was nobody to harm, um, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? <gasps> it just starts throwing up on the stand. Oh, that, oh, erm. Um. What? <laughs> this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Solid, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, erm, um, well, I, gee, that's really a good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do, point out contradictions. Lies always be, what? Beget. Beget more lies. Thanks, ominous voice. <laughs> See it through one, and up, and the whole story falls apart. Thanks, my. I remember now! Would you care to give your testimony again? I have so many fucking voices to voice! <laughs> time of discovery, let's see. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time! There was a voice saying the time! It was probably coming from the television! Oh, but it was... Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of the tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Oh, I'm about to cross-examine this bitch. Right. 
You know what to do. I got this one. <laughs> Check this shit out. Presents the wrong evidence. <laughs> Here's my my badge. <laughs> All right. What, do you want to press on anything, or do? You... <clears throat> Are you sure it was the TV or not a radio? Well, no. I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only a large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the, the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. Objection! You did it! <laughs> Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard the television or a video. I, well... Er... The defense has a point. Thanks, Your Honor. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sollett? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now! Mr. Sollett, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem- oh shit, no bad. That, and you seem rather distraught. Mom's <laughs> weak, my, my- my apologies, your honor. It, um, it has been a shock finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sollett. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. He just wrote that. <laughs> Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I, I saw it. There was a table clock on the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. It must have been when I saw it. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Lally. Oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> Didn't hear the time, I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. It's what I saw. That's what I said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. I know I don't like fish. <laughs> oh, okay, once you get to the end, she'll try to help you and whatnot. It'll just wrap around. Oh. Uh. Yeah. The table clock in the apartment is a murder weapon. Good job. <laughs> Wait just a minute! The murder weapon wasn't a clock? This is a statue! <laughs> it's not just a boulder, it's a rock! Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence! Buddy, who- just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw It. Hey, um, I- I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it does look as it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. So what the fuck did you discover it was a clock? <laughs> I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yeah, how the fuck did he know it was a clock before us? <laughs> Your Honor, this is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock if he was holding it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly, a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Good job. <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> you were inside the apartment the day of the murder! Oh, yeah, prove it! Prove I went in there! 
I'll do you better than that. I can prove you're the one who killed her! You struck her head with a clock, and then the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! <laughs> Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I shall be bawling in this court right now. <laughs> Mr. Saw it. The sound you must- the, the sound must have left an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice just burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. <laughs> Wait, does that- what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! That's a guilty ass face if I've ever seen one! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, uh, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard no. I mean, I saw, I saw. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it was him. I'm telling you, I saw him. He, he killed her and he should burn, burn, give him death. Your Honor, lack of hair, Lord. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the, the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think this through carefully. Y your Honor, the sound Mr. Saw at her was definitely this clock. The fact is clear if you simply... Ask that neighbor now. <laughs> I don't know, ask the yeah. What would examining the clock's batteries do? I guess to see if it has batteries in it. Let's sound the clock now, here in the court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ugh! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discretion between what Mr. Saw had heard and the actual time of death. Yeah, so if he heard one, he actually killed her at four. Yeah. So, Mr. Saw it? Try to talk your way out of this one! <laughs> Look, you forgot one thing. Oh no, what, what is he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you have no case. Right, how am I gonna prove this? <laughs> Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict this witness. Fuck! Unfortunately. Uh-oh. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sollett. Came all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal, a criminal! You lawyers and all, you're all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Not womp womp. <laughs> Game credits roll. <laughs> There's nothing I can do now. Not so fast, Mr. Saw it. Maya? I'm Chief? Mia? Whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Wright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time thinking about the- Wait, don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? 
Can you think of the reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Oh. Do you have it? Is Paris three hours before? I think it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with that. Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere to prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course! There's a piece of evidence in the court record that would prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Take that! Take that. <laughs> the victim had just returned home from what? a. Oh. <laughs> Man, Phoenix got a deep voice all of a sudden. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. there, it's 1 a.m. the next day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Could go the other way. Yeah. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset the clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard was when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough to you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say Mr. Dunnett? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> uh, why didn't they draw the silhouette just like... <laughs> Uh, order, order, I say. Womp womp. <laughs> well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, um, he was arrested and was taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright, me, I stand up with my eyes bulging out of my face. Uh, I wooga! <laughs> uh, yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just like, You're not gonna come with me, you bastard! Stop! <laughs> at this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty! Yay! <laughs> now, who the fuck threw all this confetti in here? <laughs> And with that, this court is adjourned. Thanks, Mr. Judge. See you in chambers later, bud. <laughs> it turns out Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saw it let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saw grabbed the nearby blunt object he could find. No, motherfucker did. <laughs> Damn, that took fucking four hours? Holy shit. Phew, I still can't believe I won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end in such a satisfying note. I never seen the chief looking so looking this happy. And she's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. <laughs> My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good! Wait, no, I mean bad! Bad, bad, bad! <laughs> Larry, you're innocent! The case is closed! But... but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man! Gone forever! Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Were you, were you gonna say she was a hoe, Phoenix? Wow, that's crazy shit! Congratulations, Harry! <laughs> Harry! Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now! Harry Butts, innocent! <laughs> Oh, um, Thanks! Look, look at his arm. Yeah, he's, he's just like me! <laughs> I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever! Let's celebrate! Dinner? Movie? My treat! Oh no, I, I couldn't. 
Hey, I was the one who got you out of this mess. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. <laughs> a, a present? For me? Wait, isn't this the evidence that... Actually, I, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Aw, that's cute! Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot about you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not trying to sympathize, really. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Gray? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh huh? Oh, yeah, right! It's in my back pocket! <laughs> what the heck is she talking about? She brought it. Wait a minute, she brought the satch to Paris with her! Take that! Take this out, Larry. Proof positive that you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What, what about that clock? This is a clock that you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to be traveling with. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. I hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, have a dinner, mommy. me? We'll, we'll drink a toast to... To innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of the reason why you became a lawyer was because of him? Um, yeah, part at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Oh my god, we're gonna. Yeah, stop! <laughs> and so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Geez, Nick, it's good to have a friend. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure he's not trying to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I could never be able to keep. That's the end of the game? That's crazy. <laughs> no, what, a, what a great game. <laughs> yeah. yeah Alright, next game. <laughs> A brand new episode has been added! <laughs> Saving content, do not turn off the PC. Yeah, save, save progress. <laughs> we ain't doing this shit over! <laughs> Please don't start the next episode. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Oh wait, no we can't read this shit! Back out! <laughs> oh fuck, just leave it right there, alright. <laughs> it's fine, I didn't think it was gonna start the next episode all of a sudden. <laughs> oh. Alright, but someone's cellular is ringing. Whose cellular is it? I guess we're gonna have to find out later. <laughs> yep. How, did you, how do you feel about this? This is your first exposure to the Phoenix Wright games. I think it's pretty pretty fun so far. Yeah, how do you think of the first trial? How, how did you feel about it? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't think about the, the fact that Paris was nine hours behind. Or nine hours ahead? I think that this is like an alternative universe of like the US where I think it takes place in California, like an alternative version of California. Yeah. I, so I technically, yeah, it would be nine hours. I'm just, I'm just going to be having a little bit of trouble if I'm supposed to know like time zones for some of these. I think that's the only one that you had to know the time zone of. Okay. Yeah, so you're good. You're all good. I think they wanted you to be like, well, they're in a different place and they use a different time, so here's the passport. <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah, it's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. So, in the next one, I'm uh, I'm hoping to get into some more deep shit. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna this is a good episode and whatnot. There's a lot more characters to deal with. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. Till next time, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.